explained in just a moment because um, actually I'm going to do that right now. In 1999, at Yankee in Portland, I qualify for the uh, uh, tr uh, USBC Travel Tournament roll-off, basically the stepladder finals, if you will. Uh, if there was TV, it would be the TV rounds. I shoot 113, 180, and 182. And I qualify as a top seed. Now, I didn't know how to... I don't know how to act as a top seed. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm like, oh, I'm one win away from a title. So that's all I could think about. Well, anyway, of course I finished second. So that puts that away. So to get back to Skowhegan of January 4, 2000. Tournament starts at 3 o'clock. I can't remember what I bowled to qualify, but I qualified as a top seed. And at this point, I'm using the Parker Bone MVP. And the uh, target zone. So I, I might have, I might have even used my riot zone as well. One of those two. I knew I was. I knew. I know that I was with Brunswick. Now I'm not sponsored by Brunswick, but I kind of talk like I am because I don't want it to be like oh, because Brunswick is very important to me. And we'll get into that in a little bit. So I qualify as a top seed for the uh, tournament finals in Skowhegan at Ken's Family Bowling Center on January 4, 2000. And now obviously I'm in the handicap division, which basically means handicap works like this. If you bowl three games and you bowl 150, 150, and 150, if you are bowling in the scratch division, then your score is 450 pins. That's what you knock down for that tournament. Now, I don't know how the handicap worked, but I believe my handicap was 65 pins a game. So if you were to take 150, 150, 150, and then you took 65, 65, 65, we're going to do that right now. Okay. So 450 plus 65 times 3. Your score in the handicap division will be 645 if you were to do that, which isn't bad. So I'm a very intense bowler. I'm a, um, and I remember I was in North Carolina. Uh, North Carolina. My mom is talking to somebody, and she says, "Oh, he gets excited because of the pros. The, he learned that from the pros or whatever. He does that because of professional bowlers." And she's right. Professional bowlers have taught me that if, you know, without them knowing it, obviously, that you got to get intense. If you love this game, act like it. Don't don't be like, "Oh, I got another strike." All right. Um, I mean, I understand for focus purposes, but if I have an opportunity to be intense, I will be intense, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So, all right, qualify top seed in, in Skowhegan, and uh, it's time for me to bowl. And I'm bowling actually pretty good. I'm using the Parker Bone MVP. Yes, as a matter of fact, that is what I was using. I was using the Parker Bone MVP and the um, Target Zone Spare Ball. I did not have my Riot Zone until 2000, Christmas of 2000. And so that's, I was using two balls and they were both Brunswick. Uh, so I shoot 201. In Skowhegan, in the championship match, and I win the tournament. So there we go. That was my fifth title. Um, and it was great. 
you know, I mean, everybody at Ken's was, uh, everybody at Ken's is just, they're great people, uh, phenomenal people there, the phenomenal people that run the place, phenomenal people that own, you know, that bowl in, in that center. As a matter of fact, uh, we'll talk in a little bit about a buddy of mine who really is helping me out. You know, he helps me out once a year and I couldn't thank him enough for it. So we're going to go back to, uh, we're going to jump ahead into 2001. Veterans Day. November 11, 2001. And since we're going to mention Veterans Day, I'd like to quickly thank you, men and, the men and women who wear the uniform, who uh, fight for our country every day so that I could have this broadcast and I could bowl in tournaments and I could live as free as I want to be. So if you are in any military branch, I don't care if it's Army, Navy, Marine, doesn't matter. Thank you for all your service and thank you for all you do. Veterans Day 2001 tournament is in Limestone. So um, get up and go. And uh, it was a 6 o'clock wake up call. <laughs> I think and the tournament was at 11 o'clock so yeah you had to be there. We left probably at about um, well, we left early in the morning. So at this point, I'm two-time defending champion. And I love that place. I mean, that is probably my favorite bowling center um, ever. No offense to Family Fun Lanes or any bowling center that I've bowled in. But that place will always have a big, big, big spot in my heart. I believe, as a matter of fact, no, I know for a fact, I qualified again as the top seed for that tournament. I had to bowl one game. Now, uh, at this point, I'm 20 years old, and I'm bowling against a little kid. Um, I don't, I, I mean, I, I hate to say it, and this is going to sound so mean. I don't care if you're 6 or 16, a title is a title. <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to be all, you know, all Pete Weber and be like, oh, who do you think you are? I am. Now, I say that and what what needs to follow that is I support Pete Weber 100%. I support Pete's mannerisms. I support how Pete acts on the lanes. I support Pete Weber 100% because of the fact that he says he is not an a-hole off the lanes. He's not even really one on, on the lanes. People need to understand that when you are fighting for a title, especially a, a title that as prestigious as, let's say, a U.S. Open or whatever, uh, he hasn't won his father's uh, tournament yet, the Dick Weber Open. So that I know to him is like a U.S. Open. Um, <clears throat> and Pete, at the Dick Weber Open in 2010, threw a 10 pin, uh, threw a shot, left a 10 pin, and he, as soon as he threw the shot, left the 10 pin, turned back, took off his sun, signature sunglasses that he wears, and uh, points at the camera and says, do not flash that camera on my approach again. Now, a lot of people, are, and this is a bowling show, so I'm going to bounce around. You know, I know where I'm leaving. I know where I'm leaving off. I don't mean to jump off topic and talk about Pete Weber for a second. But <clears throat> if if you think Pete Weber is wrong for that, I'm sorry. I really am. Uh, th th that camera person, I don't know who it is. And I don't want to assume anything, but I'm going to at this point. That camera person is not bowling for a title. That camera person is guaranteed a paycheck for what they do. Pete was bowling for a $25,000 paycheck and an exemption on the tour. 
for the next season. And what if he didn't leave a 10-pin? What if he left a Greek church, which is a five-count split? What if he left the big four? Basically, what he was saying at that particular moment was, you know, how I don't know how else he's supposed to say it. I'm sure you'd, he'd like to say, you, I'm sure bowling fans would like him to say, you know, I was distracted there. Please don't do that again. But that's not Pete Weber. Pete Weber is very intense. And the more people hate him, the more I love him. I will say that. I mean, I if I hear somebody say, "Oh, Pete Weber. Oh, he's he's an, you know, he's an asshole. He's this, he's that." No. <laughs> no, he's not. Cuz Pete Weber will sign your autograph. He will do whatever anything he can for you, ask any answer any questions off the lanes. Um <clears throat> but yes, when I won that last tournament in Limestone, I I beat a little I beat a little kid who's probably he's probably an, he's probably a teenager, probably 18. Obviously he's 18, 20 maybe. He was a young kid. If I beat him I won my third consecutive title in Limestone. So, let's get back on topic, I guess. Um I got a couple more things to say about Mr. Weber in just a moment. Um <clears throat> So the season goes on and now it comes time to go back to Limestone 2002. Now the weird thing is I'm a very su- superstitious person. I am probably overly superstitious. Well, I don't know. I could be like Ryan Schaefer who <laughs> who won't throw a bowling ball if it has a particular serial number on there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Which, listen, I love professional bowlers, man. So if you uh, hear me talk about random professional bowlers, it's because they mean so much to me and um, they're just awesome. So so why does me being superstitious, what does that have to do with anything? Well, when I won in Limestone, the tournaments were in the in the fall and winter, or they were in the fall. It was in October or or November, and this particular one was the very last one of the year. So, and what's awesome about this was my grandfather, my uh, my papa, for the people that um, understand French that are listening. I love the man to death. He's probably my. Uh, Probably one, probably one of my biggest heroes in life. Actually, got a chance to watch me bowl, and I bowled bad. And I'll tell you why. I got in there and I thought I'd uh, throw some shots, practice a little bit, get ready. Well, I think I practiced a little too much because I'm still in the practice pair, and and uh, Ben Johnson, the second, comes to me and says, "Derek, uh, tournament's about to start." Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I bring my bowling balls to the uh, pair that I'm supposed to be bowling on. And I'm throwing... That is when I have my uh, my ride zone, Parker Bone MVP, and my Brunswick target zone. Uh, so... I bowled terrible because I was thinking about winning. I was thinking about being a four-time defending champion. Because that was going to be my last season or close to it as a junior bowler. I didn't win. I struggled so bad. And I felt horrible. Like, I called home. I called uh, called my parents and I couldn't, I could barely talk. Um, 